Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining the Jewish Museum London for this special live object talk. My name is Shireen and I am a learning programme manager at the Jewish Museum London and today I am delighted to share this object talk. Now, tomorrow marks a very important day for both the Jewish community and the international community. Tomorrow is Holocaust Memorial Day, an international day of remembrance of the six million Jewish people and millions of other people killed under Nazi persecution and in other genocides that have occurred around the world. Our museum works closely with Holocaust survivors to ensure that their stories continue to be heard. We have a dedicated Holocaust gallery, which focuses on one individual story. Today, we are going to learn more about this individual testimony by taking a closer look at artwork from the museum's collection and the stories behind it. Now, the theme for Holocaust Memorial Day this year is one day. This theme invites us to consider one day when everything changed, sometimes for the worse and sometimes for the better. I invite you to consider this theme as we explore the artwork today. I am now going to share with you the art that we will be looking at. Hmm. At first glance, this painting may seem like an unusual choice for HMD, Holocaust Memorial Day. But take a moment and think about this. What do you see? What do you think the red figure in the middle represents? And how about the sea of faces that surround it? What does this artwork mean to you at first glance? And how about now, as I have zoomed out? What is this boxed-like structure meant to be? Well, before we answer all of those questions, it might first of all help to know the artist behind the painting. This is Leon Greenman. Perhaps you'd recognize him if you have been to the museum before as our Holocaust gallery is centered around his testimony. Leon painted this image. Now, Leon was a British citizen, but grew up in Rotterdam in Holland. He was also a very creative man. When he left school, he became a hairdresser, but he also enjoyed singing, giving many performances around Rotterdam. It was at one of these singing events that he met Esther Van Dam commonly known as Elsa. Elsa was also a British um, citizen with Dutch family. She lived in London in Golders Green. Now, Leon moved back to London to start dating Elsa, and they were eventually married on the 9th of June, 1935, in Stepney Green Synagogue. Leon and Elsa were living in Rotterdam when the Second World War broke out in September 1939. Their son Barney was born on the 17th of March 1940. Barney was registered as a British citizen at the consulate in Holland. When the Nazis occupied Holland in May 1940, Leon had given his family's British identity documents to friends for safekeeping. However, the friends eventually became fearful of being punished by the Nazis and destroyed the only proof of the Greenman's British identity. The family was taken out of their home on October the 8th, 1942 and taken to Westerbrook Transit Camp. At Westerbrook, the family was waiting for documents which would prove their British citizenship in order to have their names removed from the deportation list. However, the documents arrived too late. And Kurt Schlesinger, the, the German Jewish camp administrator, refused to remove their names from the list. Unable to prove their British nationality, they were sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau, 
where Elsa and Barney were murdered. So, let's look at this image again, this painting. What do you see now? This is an image painted by Leon Greenman of his wife and child. Elsa would make her own clothes. She was known for it. And from thick red curtains, she made an outfit for herself and one for Barney. This is what they wore to Auschwitz Birkenau. As they were forcefully separated from Leon to join the women and children line, Leon describes them going upwards but left at the top, their two pointed heads. And his eyes were looking at the two pointed heads. I can see Elsa clearly, he says for she was wearing a thick red cape over her head and shoulders to keep her warm. She gestured a kiss to me with her hand partly holding up Barney so that I could see him also. This was the last time he ever saw them again. Many of us will be familiar with photographs of and from camps, death camps, concentration camps, transit camps and more. Photographs that document the atrocities carried out there. Photographs that show Jewish prisoners being separated from loved ones, many to be sent to death camps. Whilst these photographs are extremely important in recording what took place, they are often taken from the perspective of the perpetrator. Now through this painting, Leon shares his memories and documents the scenes from the perspective of a Jewish individual. He is actively choosing to record this moment from his life, sharing it from his perspective. Art, this art, is very powerful in conveying emotions and experiences. Through this painting, Leon has drawn the numerous faces of women and children packed together. It is a sea of faces at the front. We can see the details in the experiences. As the faces stretch back, they almost fade into one another. The difficulty of trying to find a loved one amongst so many is emphasized. There is a very real sense that we are looking at the memory of someone who was there. As opposed to a photograph which shows the whole scene in equal detail, this painting focuses on the faces near the front, the action taking place. There is an awareness of what is going on beyond this. This way we can be aware of what is happening in our peripheral vision but this is not where our attention is focused. We are looking at what Leon remembers looking at. Once again, through art, we can remember the Holocaust through the perspective of a Jewish man. Now, Leon painted many scenes depicting his memory of the Holocaust, difficult memories that stayed with him years after liberation. But not all only did he um, paint artwork, but he created artwork in many different mediums and forms. Let's briefly take a look at another one of Leon's artworks, this time sculpture. Now this model shows the upper body of an Auschwitz prisoner leaning on a small brick wall. It was created by Leon Greenman himself. The loose bricks suggest that he is probably working on that wall. Work in the camps differed depending on which camp the prisoner was in, but heavy physical work such as construction was common in almost every camp. The model is wearing the typical blue and white striped uniform of prisoners. Upon arrival, these prisoners would be stripped of their own civilian clothing and were forced to wear a uniform. The belonging of the deported was sorted and either used within the camp or sold in Germany. Take a look at this sculpture. What do you see? Now, Leon Greenman made this model from experience, from his memory. He made this when he was in hospital, suffering from depression. Whilst the liberation of the camps occurred over 75 years ago, this model remains, or reminds us, I should say, that suffering did not end at this date. It was a long journey to try to rebuild lives. For Leon, 
After liberation, he tried to find his wife and son only to discover that they had both been murdered in the death camps. On the train on which Leon was deported to Auschwitz were 700 people and just two survived, including Leon himself. He had survived, but the memories would stay with him. As we can see through this sculpture, art is also powerful in allowing individuals like Liam to express their trauma. Drawing, painting, sculpting are all means of expressing grief without needing to use words. Perhaps Leon used his artwork at that difficult time in hospital to provide an outlet for the grief and loss he was experiencing. Now, as we move forward, Art continues to play an important role in Holocaust education as a testimony and a means of expression. Even in 2022, we see art being used as a tool to continue the legacy, both of those who lost their lives who were murdered in the Holocaust, and also those who survived and try and continue to try to process their memories and their trauma. Now, an example of the way that art continues to continue this legacy is a project that we did at the Jewish Museum London. In 2019, we worked with the Holocaust Educational Trust and Jamie, a mental health charity, on the Your Legacy and Me project. In this project, young people created their own artwork reflecting on the themes of legacy. The artwork continued the legacy of many of the survivors that we have worked with and continue to work with over the years. Jackie Young, Elsa Shamash, Goethe Bobova, and Solly Irvin. And if you take a closer look, you can see the survivors' images below and the young people physically creating over them to continue their legacy, to honour their legacy. Now, these photos currently form an online exhibition and did a physical exhibition last year and the year before. Now, this is why museums are important spaces, important spaces of legacy, given a voice to the artwork and objects that we hold to continue the legacy of community stories. Now, it is an honor to share these artworks from our collection. And if you would like to find out more about this collection, about Leon's story, and about Holocaust education in general, please do feel free to visit our museum where we continue to tell these stories. Now, I encourage you to reflect on these, um, these stories and to reflect on this powerful artwork today, tomorrow for Holocaust Memorial Day, but beyond as well. But until then, thank you so much for staying with us and joining us today. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.